Hi, uh, in this video I'm going to talk you through a practice project. Um, this is not a real project, um, it doesn't go towards any marks or anything. This is an example project that you can use to help you prepare for a controlled assessment. So if you're a student, you can follow along. If you're a teacher, you might want to use this project as part of your own um, teaching. Okay, so this practice project is the uh, cinema planning project, okay? And um, the idea is that um, you are going to create a program that calculates how profitable a particular type of cinema screen would be depending on a given situation. Um, for example, how many adults there are, how many pensioners there are, how many students there are, and what kind of seats they are using, whether it's a standard seat or a premium seat. So we've got these three types of um, uh, tickets, uh, adult, pensioner and student. Um, this information is actually in a text file, or rather um, a CSV file. So this is what it looks like. So this is the prices.txt text file, but it's structured um, in such a way that the, the different elements are separated by a comma. And this table in this uh, document explains that. So the first element is the ticket code. The next element here, adult, uh, is the ticket name. You've got the price um, as a standard seat, and then you've got the price as a premium seat. Okay, so I'm going to close that down and I'm going to talk to you about um, the rest of this project. So, when the program is uh, used, some information is going to have to be entered into the system. Um, that includes the size of the cinema screen to be used. So the idea is that this cinema that's being built can have different types of cinema screen. It can have a small, standard or large screen. Okay, so we can look at figure two here, which explains what those are. A small screen has a capacity of about 120 standard seats. And if you include any premium seats, then there has to be a minimum of 10 seats, 10 premium seats in the small cinema screen. Now, a premium seat takes up twice the amount of space as a standard seat. So 10 premium seats are effectively taking up the space of 20 standard seats. Okay, so that's something you need to uh, bear in mind. So the program is going to ask for the size of the cinema screen to be used, the number of premium seats you are uh, going to use, if there are any, you are allowed zero or the minimum value. Um, there's another aspect to the premium seats that we um, will talk about in a moment. You're going to say the number of standard tickets sold for adults, pensioners and students and the number of premium tickets sold for pensioners, adults and students. So those are the basic bits of information your system is going to have to take in. The system is then going to run some calculations and calculate um, how much of a profit that particular cinema screen will generate given the information that you feed it. So figure three shows some examples of uh, the kind of calculations you're going to have to work out. So the number of standard seats, well, I said before that the, num uh, the number of premium seats is effectively, well, one premium seat takes up twice the amount of space as a standard seat. So the calculation, the formula, to work out the total number of standard seats is the capacity of the screen, so what was the maximum capacity of the screen, minus the number of premium seats times two. That will tell you how many standard seats you're going to have. So as an example, if you had the small cinema screen, if we scroll up here, which has a capacity of 120 standard seats and we included 10 premium seats, well, these take up twice as much space as the standard seats. So actually, you take this value and you subtract 
the uh, the total value from here times two. So you take uh, take away twenty. So one hundred twenty minus twenty. So you would have one hundred standard seats, and you would have ten premium seats. You also have to calculate the screen cost per seat. Now on this figure as well, it tells you the average cost per seat per film. So roughly it will cost the cinema five pounds per person in costs to run a small cinema screen. Okay, that the costs you might uh, come from things like the actual cost of the movie. Uh, that they, that, you know they have to pay the, um, the 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 movie companies for um, every time they show a film paying their staff, cleaning, all that sort of stuff. A small screen, because it has fewer people in it, actually costs more money per film, per person, okay? Whereas a large screen is a little bit cheaper. You have to work out the total screen cost, the adult ticket income, the pensioner ticket income, and the student ticket income. Those adult pensioner and student incomes are based on the number of premium seats and the number of standard seats which are bought by each group. The total income is basically all of your income added together. And then the profit is your income minus your costs. Okay, so your program is going to have to work all these things out. And this figure four shows an example. Now, I'm not going to go through it in detail because it is on the screen and you can pause the video and watch through it. You'll also have access uh, to um, the uh, this actual PDF if you are uh, one of my students at least um, and so yeah this is an example I'll leave it on the screen just pause it and you can take a look at the kind of um, data which is going in uh, to help you arrive at basically your final profit so this is what needs to be shown at the end the, the final profit uh, for running that cinema screen Okay, now this task is broken down into a variety of different elements, or rather I should say this project is broken down into a variety of different tasks. Task one is basically taking the data that was in that prices.txt uh, file, the CSV file, taking it in and storing it into your program in some way. Task two is about creating a menu so your users can use the system really easily. Task three is just allowing the the user to quit the program. So the first three tasks are fairly straightforward. And on um, my YouTube channel, um, in the playlist where you'll find this video, you'll see a tutorial that explains how to make, um, how to suck in the CSV file and also how to make a menu system. Okay. In fact, there are video tutorials explaining all the skills you need for this particular task, um, uh, well, this project, I should say. Okay, so task four, is about just entering the screen cinema size. So that is allowing the user to type in small, medium, or large, um, and then returning some information to the user based on what they've typed in. If they've typed in a screen size that doesn't exist, you need to give them an error message and return them to the menu. If they do type in a valid code, i.e. small, medium, or large, then you need to return the full name of the screen. So if they type in the code Excel for large, it should say large screen. It should return the maximum capacity for the screen. So the small one, as you know, was 120. And the minimum number of premium seats, if any, are to be included. And again, we know that for a small cinema screen that the minimum was 10. So the, the program needs to that, record that information and then return the user to the menu. If the user selects um, a menu option called entering the seating information, it's got to check that they've selected the correct, uh, well, it's got to check that they've selected a uh, cinema screen first. Then it's going to collect some more information from the user. It's going to ask them how many premium seats are they going to want to use. Now, if the program is not zero, sorry, if the ent entry, entry by the user into the program is not zero, then the number of seats, if it's less than the minimum, then there's an error and they, return, they are returned to the main menu. If the user enters too large a number, now in this project I'm saying that the, the maximum number of premium seats you can have is up to half of the standard size seats. That allows you to have all premium seats. 
Okay, but you can't have more premium seats than than there is actually space. Okay, so in a in a capacity of 120 standard seats, because each premium seat is twice the size of a standard seat, then the maximum capacity for a 120 standard capacity is 60 premium seats. Okay, because it's exactly half. Then, okay. Now, uh, that was my watch going off, telling me that I have been sat down for too long. Okay. So the program should then calculate the number of standard seats based on the number of premium seats you said and the number of standard seats within that cinema screen. Once the system has logged all that information, it should then return you to the main menu. The next stage is calculating the profit. Now, this is in this part of the program, you are basically feeding in the information to the program about um, uh, how many adults have bought standard seats and premium seats, how many students have bought standard and premium, and how many pensioners have bought standard and premium. Um, those are essentially the, the income elements for your program. It's then going to calculate the cost because you know the capacity of your cinema screen. And in this program, you are going to assume that every seat is taken up. Okay, so every standard seat that you've allocated and every premium seat that you've allocated, they've all got people in and that you're going to calculate the income from that figure. You're then going to calculate the profit, which is your total income minus your total costs. And the program has then got to show the user what that information is okay and on the screen right now is an example of the output that your program should give to the end user okay the final part is an option that allows the user just to clear all the options that they've selected so far so this allows them basically to start the process again and that's the program. Now what we're going to do is just have a quick run through it. So here's the program running. So the cinema planning program. Now what we're going to do is we're going to enter in a screen size. Okay, so we're going to select the first thing. Now let's use the example data uh, in here. So we're using a standard, we're going to use a standard um, screen size. So the code for standard, if we look back up here, is ST for standard. So let's stick in standard. Now your program should allow upper, uppercase or lowercase or mixture. Okay. So the first thing the program does is it says um, I've selected a standard capacity, a uh, standard uh, screen size. It has a capacity of 150 and a minimum premium seats uh, capacity of 20. So if I then do number two, enter seating information, you see I was returned to the main menu automatically. It's going to ask me how many uh, premium seats do I want? Well, the minimum is 20. Just to show you what happens, if I try to do 19, I get a little error message saying error, incompatible number of premium seats chosen, returning to main menu. Okay, so let's try again. Now let's use the values that I've got in here. Let's scroll down to this. Now, uh, I've selected 24, 24 seats. Okay, so let's have a look back at this menu. So how many premium seats are there? Well, there are 24, so let's feed that in. Now, that value has been saved and I've, I've been returned to the main menu. So let's calculate the profit now. So three. Okay, so my standard capacity is 102, which if you look up here is what it's calculated, okay? Um, how many standard t adult tickets am I going to have? Well, I think I chose 80 adult, 20 student, and two pensioner. So 80 adults, 20 students, and two pensioners. I have a capacity of 24 premium uh, seats, which is what I put up here when I was doing uh, menu choice two. So how many adult tickets at premium am I, have I got? I've got 18 adult, two student and two pensioner. So 18, two and two. Okay, so the total cost of running the film is 504 pounds. 
the profit I'm making is uh, 694 because if you if you look at the, the actual income, it's 900, £930 pounds from standard tickets and £268 pounds for the premium tickets. You add those two together and then subtract the cost and that gives you the total of 694. And again, it returns me back to the main menu. Now, I'm just going to clear the data and show you some other things that the program has got to be able to do. So enter the screen, cinema size. If I enter a code that doesn't exist, I get an error message. Okay, invalid choice. Um, let's put in small this time. Uh, I'm going to input the seating information. How many premium seats have, am I allowed? Well, I know that it shouldn't allow me 61 because it, the maximum should be 60. So I'm going to try 61. Incompatible number of premium seats chosen. This time I'm going to choose something more reasonable. Oh, in fact, I, I won't do any. Okay. Um, uh, I've entered the choice. Oh, oops. Uh, I thought I was still in my menu. Let's run that bit again. I'll pause the video and then go again. Okay, so let's put in the small again. Let's go back to seating information and we're going to put in no premium seats. Remember, you are allowed no no premium seats, but you must, if you do have a premium seat, it must be um, the minimum value, okay? And no, certainly no more than half the capacity. Now I'm going to calculate the profit. Now this time, because I've got no premium seats, you'll see that it won't ask me for any premium seats. So how many standard adult tickets? Well, there are, um, let's just do 100 and 10 and 10. And again, it says there are no premium seats. It's not even asked me because it knows there are no premium seats. Um, so £600 of my cost, but I'm actually making uh, £1,110 and the profit is £510. And again, if I just now press zero, it quits. So there you have it. There is the video uh, that explains the project. I know it's a long video, um, but it does cover quite a lot of things. That is basically what it is you've got to make for this project. Now, for this particular project, what I would recommend you using are dictionaries. In particular, dictionaries which access other dictionaries. It is such a useful tool. Um, and I would certainly check out my dictionary videos in this playlist to help you understand how you could do that. Once you get your head around doing that, wow, this program is going to be so much easier for you to make. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that um, and I hope you found it useful and take care and I'll see you again in another tutorial.